Hello, it's Darren Moore again from the How to Survive Your Police Career website, providing, as ever, health, welfare and relationship advice for officers and frontline staff, and all of it as practical as possible. In today's podcast, I'm going to offer some advice about dealing with people who are, well, let's face it, going out of their way to wind you up. You know who I'm talking about. That drunk you're stuck in the back of the van with. The fella in the holding cell, buzzed up in cocaine and shouting at everyone. Or maybe that suicidal druggie you're doing the constant supervision on up at the hospital and no one's available to relieve you. Of course, the reason they're acting like this is because they want you to lose your temper, swear at them back, or ideally punch them. And have you noticed how these people always get really mouthy after they've been cuffed up? As a street bobby and then a response skipper, I spent endless hours pondering how best to deal with these idiots. And then the answer came to me one evening when I was covering custody in my usual inept fashion. And I found myself face to face with a particularly unpleasant piece of low life rubbish who, I guess, from his constant goading, would have liked nothing better than for me to have jumped over the desk and rearranged his front teeth for him. Did I do this? No, of course I didn't. I was far too close to retirement and he was a big lad. I may have ended up looking foolish and probably would have been nicked myself by the very bobbies who had arrested my victim. What I did instead was a lot more sensible and probably the most logical thing I could have done under the circumstances. I began, of course, to visualise this chap as a pixie. Yep, you did hear that correctly. A pixie. Bizarre, isn't it? But from the moment I got that pixie idea in my head, he wasn't winding me up anymore. He wasn't getting under my skin. He was just really, really funny to look at. So much so that I found myself smiling. And then my anger dropped. I became calmer, and most importantly of all, my fists uncurled. Crikey, how funny is this, I thought. I'm being threatened by a pixie. What a squeaky voice he's got. And look at those pointy ears. From that moment, I couldn't help but smile at this abusive idiot because he was, well, just really peculiar to look at. I glanced at the bobbies who had nicked him and smiled. We've got a pixie who wants to fight everyone. Instead of those prison joggers and sweat-stained hoodie he was wearing, I visualised instead some teeny-weeny shorts, funny little boots with pointy toes, and a pink t-shirt with a flower on the front. It was hilarious. And it worked. No teeth were rearranged. I didn't pull a muscle leaping over the desk at an elderly age. No one got suspended. The drunk just calmed himself down when he cottoned on to the fact that I was finding him more funny than annoying. He was still an idiot, of course, but not one that ruined my career through losing my temper and duffing him up, or at least trying to duff him up. It's a bizarre technique, I know, but it does work. I carried on pixie and idiots for the rest of my service, and I was a happier Bobby for doing so. Try it yourself, though, at the first opportunity. It'll make you smile, if nothing else. And if the rest of the team are in on the joke, or perhaps I should call it a prisoner roughing up avoidance technique now, then it's even funnier because you find yourself looking at them and catching that smile back which says, yeah, I'm trying not to laugh as well. This old pixie's coming out with some stuff, isn't he? Pixie, of course, will pick up on these reactions and become unsettled. They know that something's going on and they're the butt of the joke, but have no idea what the joke is. They might become more animated for a bit and so even more bizarre in that funny way that only pixies can. And it's all you can do to avoid bursting into laughter, which may be a bit unprofessional, I guess, Although perfectly understandable, of course, because, well, let's face it, what's funnier than a foul-mouthed pixie? But the important thing is that, second by second, you're sucking away from your little pixie friend the oxygen that comes from knowing that they're winding you up, which is why, after a minute or so, they tend to give up on their pixie-like ranting before withdrawing back into themselves, confused, frustrated, but pleasantly silent. They've been pixied. And it doesn't just have to be a prisoner. Anyone who's going out of their way to annoy you can be pixied. The arrogant motorist, the annoying teenager playing up for his mates. Maybe that protester who's become a little too enthusiastic and shouting in your face whilst desperately in search of that cause. Pixie them. It's a better career move than punching them. There's a chapter on this subject in my book, How to Survive Your Early Years as a Police Officer. Yep, I apologise, that's a blatant sales pitch. Well, there's also loads of other information for the new Bobby. It's the boiled down wisdom of my 30 years of frontline experience, if you like, mixed in with some funny police stories to illustrate the points. Look on the website and you'll find a video of me with some wonderfully bad production values, telling you more about the book, whilst obviously trying to sell you a copy. And while you're there, check out the videos for our other two books. There's the How to Survive Your Relationship with a Police Officer one. Buy it for your partner if you want them to understand just how much fun your job can be. Hopefully it'll cut down a bit on that 
join the force, get a divorce stuff that we're always seeing. And our main health book for Bob is How to Survive Your Police Career, which is all about sleep, nutrition, mental health, exercise, and everything else I found myself researching 25 years into my service, when I discovered myself fat, knackered, stressed, and unable to walk down the stairs without hating life, and so decided to write a book about it for other Bobbies. These two other videos have also got some comic production values as well. When you watch them, just remember that you're looking at what was probably my 50th attempt at getting them right. How those presenters on Crime Watch do it, I can't imagine. Anyhow, we're nearly done for today. But don't forget, we're always keen to work with any police services or staff groups, local or national, or police commissioners, or any other organizations out there that want to collaborate with us on creating an app or other materials for getting the information from our books out to officers and staff. Perhaps you'd like them downloaded to your troops work phones so that they can access them whenever they want. All these things are possible, so just get in touch. We've done the research and come up with the practical answers, but more importantly, we present it in a way that the average Bobby is going to read it because that was always our test when writing these books. Sure, there's loads of stuff out there, but is some jaded Bobby or civilian working 24 seven going to be interested in our stuff? And the answer's yes, they will. If we can make it funny, interesting, and as connected to their lives as possible. And that's what we do. Take this pixie concept for a moment. Yeah, it sounds funny, I know, and we've had some fun with it today, but it's a really simple and effective technique for stopping bobbies from getting complaints through losing their temper and thumping people, which reduces stress for them in the long term, but also reduces the short term stress and anxiety during those face off confrontations with some idiot trying to goad them into a fight. Because when you look into this stuff, smiling and laughing naturally reduces stress and high blood pressure. And I'm sure the police organization as a whole would prefer less complaints especially if it was combined with their bobbies taking less sick leave through stress. And that's why they should teach Pixie in as an officer safety technique. But remember you heard it here first. The books are full of practical tips like this, so get involved. And they're also funny. They'll make you smile. And we all need that. But anyhow, enjoy Pixie in people as opposed to punching them. And until next time, from How to Survive Your Police Career, stay safe and be lucky. Bye bye.